Hi, in this demonstration we're going to talk about class extensions. I've got a very similar uh, example to what we had in Unit 3 with the part demo, with uh, relieving uh, a part of uh, parts orders with quantities and so forth. I've got a label here that says quantity with no quantity after it uh, currently, and I've got a button called order part. And of course these are wired up to a property, part label, and a method, an IB action method, called order part on the touch up inside event on that button, as we've done many times before. So in our part class, we're doing the same thing. We've got a delegate called part delegate, and we talked about this when we talked about delegation in unit three. I've got two delegate methods, quantity low and quantity zero. And then I've got my properties. I've got my integer quantity property here and a reorder level. And I'm doing essentially the same thing I was doing before. Now in the view controller, uh, I've got a method called order part. And then I'm also uh, responding to this part delegate from the part class itself. So in the view controller, I've, I've got my delegation methods, my quantity low and quantity zero. And each of those methods is just going to show an alert. Now here's where we begin to uh, uh, branch off from the code that we did before. We're talking about extensions in this uh, the, in this demo, so the first question you're asking is, what in the world is an extension in the first place? Well, an extension is a way within a class to add private properties and private methods to the class. All we've been dealing with so far are public properties. Well, an extension can hide certain properties from a class uh, from from code that uses a class as an object. So we can we can declare properties to be private and in fact if we declare properties within an extension they are private to the implementation of that class only. So up here we have this odd looking interface section within the implementation. We have our main interface and here, all the properties we declare and all the methods we declare will be public to the class, uh, to any code that uses the class, that instantiates the class. But if we declare properties and methods within an interface section inside the implementation file, this is called a class extension. Uh, even though the word extension doesn't appear, this interface contains private methods and properties of the class. So. What does that mean? Well, we have one method that is used only internally, and this is the show alert method that pops up the alert when the quantity is low or the quantity is zero. And we've seen that before, but we're now declaring this uh, in the extension to this class in the implementation file. What this does is it requires us, the, the compiler then will require us to implement this class within the body. If we just implement it, the compiler doesn't really know that we've implemented it. So I'll show you that here. Uh, this show alert method, uh, if we comment the show alert method out, then in the implementation, we'll see this warning message that says incomplete implementation. Why? Because we declared a private method that we never actually implemented. So this is one thing that a class extension does for us. And at this point, I'll get rid of those. At this point, we'll run, and it will work uh, in a very similar fashion to the way it worked when we talked about delegation. So quantity is 10, and then we order a part. And when we get down to 5, which is its reorder level, it'll give us the alert. And of course, when we get down to 0, it'll give us both alerts just as it did before. Now, if you're coming from, a, from an object-oriented procedural language like C++ or Java, uh, where we have many, many more modifiers than we seem to have here in Objective-C, you might be wondering, oh, wait a minute. If an extension is a way to declare private properties and methods of a class, 
why wouldn't I make the quantity of this class, the property itself, private of the part class, and then just allow us to get to it through methods that are public? In other words, why can't I do the good object-oriented techniques that I was trained to do? Well, in Objective-C, you can. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's make our quantity read-only. Of course, the way we would do this in Java is to only declare a, to declare quantity, the property itself, to be uh, private, and then to create a public getter and no setter. That would create a read-only property. Well, in Objective-C, our getters and setters are already automatically created when we synthesize the property, right? Well, not quite. If we declare a property to be read-only, it will only create a getter and not create a setter. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and so far so good. Now we've created a getter and we're not creating a setter. And we're synthesizing this in part.m. Okay, but now we see that when we try to set the quantity on the part, we get an error. Why? Because it's an assignment to a read-only property. Okay, and that makes sense because now all we're synthesizing is the getter. We don't have a setter. Now, of course, we could still get around this uh, a little bit more difficultly, but we could get around it. But here's what we're going to do. To get around this, in the part.m implementation file, we're going to add a new section. We're going to add an interface section in the implementation file. And the interface name is going to be part. And we'll use empty parentheses. And these empty parentheses indicate that this is a class extension on part. Anything I put in here is going to be private to the part. So now I can make the property non-atomic assign read write int quantity. What does that do? It overrides the declaration of the quantity property which here is declared to be read only in this line. It's declared to be read only and so the public interface of my part class has a read-only property quantity, but within the class itself and within the object itself, that quantity property is read-write. And this is one of the most powerful uses of a class extension. We can make a publicly readable only property into a read-write property. And of course, that made my uh, that made my error messages down here where I'm setting the quantity go away because I do have a setter. When I, when I get to the implementation, when I synthesize the quantity, a setter is created. However, that setter is a private method, not a public method. So now out here in our viewcontroller.m, it all works because we have not actually set the quantity explicitly. We're using that order quantity method and the order quantity method within part actually sets the quantity. If I did explicitly try to set the quantity such as uh, this line here, I'm going to get an error and that error is going to say assignment to read only property because there is no public setter. There's a private setter but the only um, the only accessor method I have here that is public is the getter because it's a read-only property from a public point of view. Okay, now again, I'll delete that line. I'll run my file and everything will work. So we can relieve the quantity on the part and again, that pops up with the alert, and of course it'll continue to pop up because we're less 
then the reorder level, and when we get to zero, we get both. So there you go. That is a class extension and how we use them. Uh, we can use them to declare any private method or any private property, and that is, of course, important, but we can also use them to override a read-only declaration for the public side or the public interface of a class with a read-write declaration for the same property for the private interface of the class. Thank you very much.